Hey, Joe Alden, MD here. And I'm Amy Alden, ARNP. Our focus is disaster, epidemics, and first aid preparedness. We want you to know what to do in situations where medical help may not be available for the short term or even the long haul. One of the ways we offer this information is through our videos. If you like our videos, we hope you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Joe Alden, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net. We're taping today, not from Florida, but from the Great Smoky Mountains in beautiful Gatlinburg, Tennessee, where we're part-time residents. As the first physician to write years ago about aquarium and avian antibiotics as a survival tool, I've long realized their utility in preventing unnecessary deaths in true survival scenarios. In normal times, seek modern and standard medical care. Lately, I've received a lot of mail asking about the upcoming FDA Veterinary Feed Directive. Does it mean the end of the availability of fish and bird meds for placement in disaster medical storage? Now, to explain what the Veterinary Feed Directive is and what it means for the preparedness community, we should first describe the problem that the directive aims to correct, antibiotic resistance. There's an epidemic of antibiotic resistance in this country, and it exists not because of pet bird or fish antibiotic use, not because preppers might put them in a dental kit or disaster medical kit, nor even primarily from the overuse by physicians. It's due to the excessive use of antibiotics on livestock. The majority of antibiotics used in the United States are given not to humans, but to food producing animals. The definition of a veterinary feed directive drug, according to the Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act, states that it's a drug intended for use in or on animal feed. The CDC number one goal of decreasing the emergence of antibiotic resistance and preventing the spread of resistant infections has three objectives. One, to implement public health programs and reporting policies that advance antibiotic resistance prevention and foster antibiotic stewardship in healthcare settings and the community. Two, to eliminate the use of medically important antibiotics for growth promotion in animals and bring other in-feed uses of antibiotics, in-feed uses of antibiotics under veterinary oversight. And three, to identify and implement measures to foster stewardship, there's that word again, of antibiotics in humans. Now, as you can see, two of the three relate specifically to animals. Why are so many antibiotics given to livestock? It's not primarily to treat infections that they may have. It's actually because, for reasons that aren't completely clear, it seems to speed their growth and gets them to market sooner. In other words, the profit motive. That's what's going on here. This is standard practice here in the U.S., but some countries like Denmark have banned the use of antibiotics on livestock unless they're needed to treat disease. Now, the FDA and the CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, are concerned about the excessive use of antibiotics in general, and in particular, on the animals that produce our food. CDC Director Tom Frieden mentioned some months ago that an increased stewardship, there's that word again, in other words, that means control, of these meds were indicated to decrease the development of antibiotic resistance. The Veterinary Feed Directive is part of that response. What are the drugs that are affected by the Veterinary Feed Directive? Well, there are too many to name here, but you can find them on our article, The Future of Fish Antibiotics and Survival, at doomandbloom.net, our website. Now, if you head over there, you'll see no mention on the list of the common aquarian antibiotic or avian antibiotics that are used in the pet industry. Fish mox, amoxicillin, is not included in the list. Neither is doxycycline, bird biotic, metronidazole, fish zole, nor others that I've recommended in the past for disaster storage. Now, some first-generation drugs like penicillin and tetracycline are mentioned but do not actually say any of the proprietary brand names related to the ornamental or hobby bird, tra bird trade or fish trade. Now, as the earliest antibiotics ever in use, these two have been especially subject to significant resistance, and therefore they may not be the best choices for survival storage in any case. At present, Thomas Labs, one of the largest distributors of fish and bird antibiotics for the pet trade, has not changed any of its policies regarding sale of these products, and they are indeed widely available online today. Their labeling, however, clearly states not for human use. Thomas Labs sources its antibiotics from the same USP 
grade manufacturing is antibiotics used for humans. But they aren't doctors. They don't deal in human health problems. Only a doctor can correctly prescribe antibiotics for specific needs in humans. As such, Thomas Lab strongly discourages anyone who wants to take fish antibiotics for themselves. And they're right, as long as a functioning modern medical system exists. The bottom line is it's important to understand that the Veterinary Feed Directive considers livestock producers and does not consider hobby fish and bird enthusiasts to be priority targets. If they did, the pet trade could possibly cease to exist. The Veterinary Feed Directive may indeed decrease the incidence of bacterial resistance in the U.S., so might the wise use of antibiotics by the nation's physicians. Hopefully one day food livestock will be raised antibiotic free. Some companies, to their credit, are already taking the step. From a preparedness standpoint, I still believe that having antibiotics in your medical kit will save lives in a long-term disaster or survival setting. The ones I've written about over the years are still available, at least for the time being. Those medically responsible in times of trouble will find them useful tools in the medical woodshed. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like this video, make an old man, me that is, very happy by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Dr. Bones Nurse Amy, following us on Twitter at Prepper Show, and joining our Facebook group pages at Doom and Bloom or Survival Medicine Dr. Bones Nurse Amy. And don't forget, Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits are at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. Fill those holes in your medical storage. Thanks again.